Hey friends, welcome back to Beards and Bitcoins. It's a crypto podcast for the man's man and yes, the ladies that love them. I am joined today as always with my bearded and beautiful co-host, BitBoy. How are you doing, buddy? Oh, I'm doing good. Doing fantastic. 2020's off to a roaring start. Oh, what a great, what a great roaring 20s beginning. Uh, it's been a great start for the podcast. You know, last week we had Antop. This week we are very excited to bring you the episode with Peter McCormick. In case you didn't know, he is the host of What Bitcoin Did podcast as well as Defiance. A super exciting episode. We, uh, we got to talk to him a lot. If, uh, if your children are in the room, uh, put headphones in because it gets a little NSF. Why would, you want, why would you want to put headphones on your children's ears so they hear the F word louder. You're sick. <laughs> You're maybe sick, I said, Justin. Maybe I, maybe I said that backwards. Or, you know, put on their favorite cartoon show, whatever. Anyway. Uh, they're listening to Kids Bop. I don't Ooh, know. Kid, kids Bop. That's, that's a great meme. Hopefully some people catch. I don't know if people know that, but it's a really funny. If, if you, if you want to watch a video that's going to make you laugh very hard, <laughs> look up. They're listening to Kids Bop. And you will find one of the funniest video in the history of the internet. Just happened I will, a few months I will, ago. I will absolutely do that. And I look forward to getting some laughs. But on with, the, uh, on with the podcast. So this is week two. Today is January 7th at the time of recording, which means we've started the second week of the new year. One of the things I know you're doing with this new year, new you, because I can see it, you're looking beautiful, is you're going keto. You're doing it. Going keto. A absolutely. Definitely uh, doing that. Um, I, I think that uh, it's a great way to lose weight. I'm overweight right now. I want to get back into good shape. A lot of people, I think they, uh, they look at me and they think that I'm some kind of uh, lazy fat guy who doesn't work out, but I actually did CrossFit for several years. Uh, I played sports my whole life, including like as an adult and stuff like that. I'm just a little out of shape right now. So um, I'm going, I, I know that I said earlier on an episode last year that I was going to run a marathon. And I still am definitely going to do that. Um, I, I, you know, the end of the year, the holidays were kind of rough, but uh, definitely doing keto, trying to get back in shape. Uh, hopefully by the end of this year, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. So we'll see. And, and by marathon, you don't, by running a marathon, you don't mean just like uh, binging a couple series on Netflix, right? No, like literally running a marathon. I've ran one before and I would like to run another one. So awesome. Yeah. got a lot well, of hidden talents and a lot of things I've done in my life. People don't know I've done. You're like the, the, the man of all trades and mystery. He's, he's done a lot, ladies and gentlemen. That's right. I have done a lot. One thing I've done is uh, I invested in XRP uh, last, uh, in 2017. Uh, I do not currently have any right now, but it's actually going to be our token time show, uh, uh, token today uh, for our new segment. We're going to be talking uh, about XRP at the end of the video, but um, or not the end of the video, the in a few minutes here. But I want to know from you before we get there, before we talk about current events, which is also a very interesting discussion today. Uh, what are you doing for your resolution in 2020? Well, I think it's along the same lines. I wanted to make myself healthier uh, physically, mentally. Um, I want to add a few revenue streams to my portfolio. Uh, so, uh, my, my goal is to just make myself a better version. I want to be a better Justin in 2020 that I was in 2019, pure and simple. I just want to be better than I was. I want this to be my best year yet. And then, you know, when I get to 2021, I want to be a better Justin in 2021 than I was in 2020. I want to always be improving every year. That's a great strategy, but honestly, I feel like another great strategy is like, let's be the best us we can be this year. And then next year we can chill, you know, because we did so good this year. You know what I'm saying? I like that. I'd like, it's like, a, I don't know if you've seen this, the, the show on Netflix. It's called The Good Place. I have not, but I'm very familiar with what it is. Okay. It's, it's kind of like that, you know, the whole thing about, you know, how you, um, with the realization of getting yourself into heaven versus hell, you know, are, like, are you going to be a good person because you want the moral karma, you want the, what's it called, moral dessert? Or are you going to do it just because it's a, a good thing to do? Mm. so the goal is just to to be a better person and, and maybe in 2021 we we eat that dessert mm. yeah yeah we eat the dessert in 2021 because in 2020 we're not eating dessert i like uh, that okay that's that's do, the plan for people for people that are like that have decided they want to lose weight and they are going the direction of keto like something i would suggest that i really well first of all parmesan crisps crisps uh, are incredibly good zero carbs but uh 
the Atkins diet people, they make like some little desserts, like little like Reese's cups and all kinds of stuff that's keto friendly, a little caramel squares. So if you got a sweet tooth, because I definitely do, then, you know, that's definitely a good way to uh, satisfy that sweet, or the sweet tooth. But also, uh, they make the little protein meal replacement shakes. I don't drink them as replacement shakes. I'll just take a couple swigs every couple hours if I'm feeling like I need something sweet. There you go. That's yeah. the way to do it. And this way, you're not overindulging. Yeah. So I'm going keto for the entire year. Well, we, uh, we wish you the best of luck. I- I'm sure I'll do, I'm still nursing some injuries from my crash, so I can't, uh, I can't work out quite yet. I need to start the cardio pretty soon here. Yeah. Uh, so I-, I will be working out. Uh, I'm going to get myself a brand new pair of tennis shoes today. I do know that. Uh, and so that I can start working out because it's been a couple weeks of just kind of laying low. And I know I'm putting on a few uh, pounds. I'm actually down in this last week because finally, you know, I wanted to talk about this last week, but we didn't. Um, I give props to anyone that's ever beaten opiate addiction. Um, cause I was on it for two weeks. I was on these pills for two weeks and I was already starting to notice that I was becoming dependent on it. So, uh, it had to cut the, cut the cord on that. Uh, so props to anybody that's ever cut that addiction because like I said, I mean, two weeks is nothing. That's like baby. Uh, and if you're in harder stuff, that's how, that's how it starts for people for sure. You yeah. know, it's interesting with addiction. They say that, uh, you know, Opiates is the only way that people who've never done drugs in their life get addicted in an older age. You know, like almost every person who's addicted to drugs has been addicted since they were a teenager. Almost every single one. Um, or it, maybe not early 20s, you know, at the very oldest. But the interesting thing about opiate addictions, and I used to run an addiction place, so I, I know a little bit about this stuff, um, is, is the only place where you're seeing uh, senior abuse. And it's first oh, really? time abuse. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Yeah, That's first crazy. Time. Yeah, guys, they hurt their back. They're 40, 50, 60 years old, um, even 70 years old. They go in, they get the opiates, and all of a sudden they're addicted, you know, just like they have been doing it their whole lives. Um, and it's, it's the only, you know, instance where uh, massive amounts of elderly people are actually getting addicted that have never done drugs. Wow, that's crazy. Well, so, but, uh, speaking of, uh, getting down, <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Down, one thing we're down with is the Monarch wallet and manscaped, uh, the sponsors of the show. Isn't that right, Justin? That's absolutely true. Uh, so we do have to thank our sponsors, uh, because the show is brought to you in part by Monarch wallet and manscaped. And we know the team at manscaped is working hard to bring you the one app to access all of the best crypto services right there in the palm of your hand. That's right. You can buy, store, spend, earn, and swap Bitcoin and most ERC-20 tokens among a ton of other features. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that's super cool. It is a, uh, a super cool app. Uh, for more information, check out monarchwallet.com. You can also go to monarchtoken.io uh, to learn more about them. That's right. And additional support for Beards and Bitcoins comes from Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-belt grooming. You heard that right. Fellas, listen up. You, you need to take care of the hair down there. This is 2020. It's a new year. It's a new you. Check out manscaped.com today. Get more information. They've got this thing. It's called the Lawnmower 2.0. We're actually going to be doing, uh, I think, a video on it. Uh, maybe we won't. A live demo. Live demo. Uh, there may be some blurred out stuff, but uh, just so you know, this trimmer is not going to nick or snag your nuts, which means manscaping accidents. Finally, gentlemen, is a thing of the past. So trust us, your balls and that special person in your life are going to thank you. That's right. Make sure you head on over to manscaped.com and use promo code BEARDS for 20% off and free shipping. That's manscaped.com code beards so bow, 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 token time bow, 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 bow. Right. Oh, i need one of those uh like those rap bow, 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 bow. yeah oh there's a really popular tiktok video of a guy who uses something called a talk box have you heard of those oh so it sounds like you're uh peter frampton something like that it's a it's actually a tube you put in your mouth yeah yeah that's like what peter frampton did back in yeah. the must be that's all right yeah so anyways, like, and uh, it's just a crazy thing. Maybe that's what we need to get you, a talk box. 
I'll just attach it to my mic. Yep. Token gonna, time. Gonna get a gonna get a talk box. Yeah, talking time. Token time today. Let's talk about XRP only because uh big big pump the other day uh yesterday the day before we recorded this show i think it was like a 12 percent pump oh. do, you, do you have any information for the listeners as to why that happened yeah so just like with every single pump ever like people see the pump and then they try to figure out why afterwards is it there is it actually a cause and effect relationship uh it's really hard to say for 100 percent, but you know people are always going to find a reason so um after the pump uh the reason now that we're getting is that uh, Binance, the world's largest crypto exchange, actually announced that they would be beginning XRP trading pairs for their futures contracts on their Ooh, futures. Platform. Futures on the XRP. That's right. Now, our guest we have a little bit later today, Peter McCormack, as I call him, he probably is not happy we're talking about XRP the same day he's coming on the show. What do you think? Eh, no, uh, because he did scoff at, um, at one point I did mention XRP and I got a oof. Yeah. Uh, it's, <laughs> but it's okay uh, because we're trying to stay relevant and current with what's going on. So if there was a different uh, token or coin that had a, a nice little pump um, before we recorded this, then it's your time to shine, baby. But in all due fairness, XRP did. And so we're going to go through a couple quick stats really quick. Uh, current, uh, at, right now at the time of recording, it's about 21 cents. Uh, you got about a $9.1 billion market cap. The market cap dominance is four, almost four and a half percent with a trading volume, a uh, 24 hour trading volume of 2.2 billion. Whew. That's yeah. A B, so with a B. Another stat that people may not know is that I was doing some research for a YouTube video um, on my YouTube analytics and stats. And uh, I use something called vidIQ for my videos and it tracks stats on all keywords. Interestingly enough, XRP gets almost exactly the same amount of YouTube searches per month mm -hmm. that Bitcoin gets. What do you think about that? I think that that's interesting. I think that, you know, they've done a great job of marketing <laughs> When I say marketing to the masses, I, I don't want to be misconstrued that, you know, that, that they're out there pushing XRP and all this stuff. But I mean, the XRP army is very loyal. Yeah. Uh, they are devoted to the community. Uh, so kudos to them. Uh, it's not my investment of choice, um, but it's not my business to tell anyone what they should or shouldn't invest in. So um, to those people, I mean, if you go on coingecko.com right now, and look at XRP, you know, they have one of the little sections, like, how do you feel about XRP today? Right now, 83% have the thumbs up. So wow. again, they, you know, it's a, it's, it's a loyal fan base. It's a, uh, it's a community that really rallies behind that project. So good for them. Good for them. Good for them. Yeah, it's definitely, you know, a controversial topic in, in crypto. And I, I think you and I have both made our personal thoughts about XRP pretty clear. Uh, several times on the show. It's not our investment, but you know, if you are in crypto and you are ignoring XRP, that in my opinion is a huge mistake because people want to know what's going on with it. And if you have a, a bad opinion of it or you don't think it's going to do well, then you know, you should speak up and say that. Um, so, you know, people get a more balanced uh, view on things, but. Absolutely. So Brad, yeah. Brad Garlinghouse or Tiff Hayden, if you're listening, come on the show. Let's talk yeah. about it. We want Tiff on the show, so but she says she won't come on. So if you if want it, Tiff, if, if you want Tiff Hayden on this podcast, make sure to tag her, please. Yeah, we want to talk. And to thank her. you. And thank you. So uh, I, I guess it's time we move on to uh, our other segment of the show. News break, break, break. That was great. Dude. I, love <laughs> I did. I actually I did my uh, oh what's that called where you do the echo man? There's like a guitar pedal a delay. Oh, I did, wow. the, I did the delay there. I was impressed. Well, here is the top news story going on in crypto right now. Wah, wah, wah. That was it. That's it. There's That's no it. news. That's the thing. There's no news going on right now. There's Crazy. nothing. Is a person who reports on crypto news, um, and I've actually had to slow down my news videos lately because there is nothing going on in crypto like people are digging around, finding old news, finding old stats, trying to bring stuff up. But right now there's just not a lot going on and it's very concerning. Yeah, concerning on a couple levels. I mean, one, if you're trying to change the way that people conduct business or transact with currencies, 
the fact that there's no major news going on, the fact that things have been, I mean, yeah, Bitcoin went up, you know, a, a couple hundred bucks in the last week or so. Yeah. Whippy, yippy. Uh, you know, talk to us at 10 K, you know, then we'll, then we'll have some news for you because yeah. then hopefully we'll be moving up, but it's just been so sideways. I wouldn't consider this a bear market. Uh, I would definitely not consider it a bull market, but this sideways business is really, I, I know a lot of people crypto on crypto Twitter. It's boring. A lot of people have left. Yeah. I would say the sideways action causes as much or more capitulation than the super downwards action. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that there are more people talking about NFL football playoffs. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of foodie posts. I mean, I'm guilty of this too. I'm posting pictures of me with a massager on my back. I mean, for God's sakes, come on. What was that? You look like Cobra Commander oh, or yeah, De I, Destro. Oh, Destro dude, this, from G.I. Joe. Dude, this thing is like, this is a super cool, it's like a Shiatsu massager. massager? Yeah, couldn't, can't yeah. speak there. But like you put like your hands on like these things so you can like put the right tension in the right spot. Uh, it was That's what she said. She yes. likes that too. Yes, that is. She loves that. So, but hate to disappoint you guys with news break today by there not being any crypto news stories. But one thing that I've learned um, in content creation is that sometimes if you can't find a story, the story is that there's no story. That there's no story. Yeah. So it'll find let, you. If you can't know. find it, it'll find you. Let us know. Drop a comment in the video if you're watching online. Um, if you're listening, you know, drop a comment on your favorite platform or you know, on our Twitter account. Let us know. What do you guys think is going on right now? Because it's super boring. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, I guess with, uh, with token time and news break out of the way, there's only one thing left to do. That's right. Here is our interview with Peter McCormick. Hope you guys enjoy it. All right, guys, we are joined with Peter McCormack, the host of What Bitcoin Did and Defiance, coming from Bedford, England, the man, the myth, the legend. Well, you're no myth, actually. You are real. Peter McCormack. No <laughs> What's up, buddy? <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no legend either. Uh, but yeah, I'm good, man. How are you? It's great to finally talk to you guys on this show because I have a beard and I have Bitcoin. It's true. Uh, finally got, my, uh, finally got on. Two for two. We like two that. Two for two. Yeah, I like that, man. Well, we're How definitely glad to, glad to have you on the show, for sure. Um, we've been trying to get you on for a while, and then just, we all got crazy schedules, so. Yeah. But, we did uh, it. We did it. We, made it we did it. We are here. It's that, it's, new, it's that new year, new us, we're making things happen. Yeah, we're rocking, we're rolling. Diaries, diaries filling up. <laughs> Bitcoin, <laughs> Bitcoin's pumping, right? Bitcoin's pumping, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good for everybody. Always does. Yeah, let's talk about Bitcoin for just a minute. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm very interested to hear, um, obviously, the name of your podcast is what Bitcoin did. And uh, you uh, are a Bitcoin maximalist, I believe. Uh, yeah. would, would you, would you, I said the same thing to Andres Antonopoulos. He was like, no, no, I'm definitely not. Well, do you consider yourself a maximalist? I, you know, everything you talk about on your podcast pretty much is Bitcoin. So the show's Bitcoin only now, and it will occasionally touch on all coins. If, if I think there's some good advice to keep people away from them, if it's like a bad investment, but there won't be anything that promotes other uh, coins. I think I've considered myself a Bitcoin maximalist sometimes, but it's a, it's a term that's used pejorative. Is that, is that term pejoratively now? I think it's like it is. A, it's used as a criticism and I'm a bit like, oh, do I really want to do that? And uh, my view is like, I really want to focus on Bitcoin. That's the one where I'm most confident will be here in another 10 years. And um, like everything else is a distraction. And even the, the arguments and battles over, you know, whether things are scams and they're not is a distraction. I, I, you know, I've got in that myself, but I mean, look, I'll be the first to say if someone comes along and they've created another blockchain based thing and it works and people are using it and go, yeah, great. Okay. You did it. What is it? That's kind of interesting. But I just, I've kind of got this feeling that, you know, I've spoken to a lot of people and I haven't just spoken to Bitcoin maximalists. I've spoken to, you know, uh, people running altcoin projects, running token projects. I've spoken to all different types of people and I just, I'm, Whilst I'm not the most technical and I can't give you a technical reason 
why none of this is going to work. I've just got a feeling that Bitcoin is going to be the one here in 10 years and most of other stuff probably won't be. Therefore, now, there's you, a problem with it. Do you, when you say here in 10 years, do you see it? And this is the way that I'm looking at it is that, you know, and, and I know a lot of people do that. It's going to be the, the digital gold. This is going to be the store of value. It's not going to be transactional. It's not going to be a currency. It's just going to be a way to store value digitally. That's how I think it. Do you know what? It's funny. The, so Mr. Hoddle said something recently online. I posted something up from when I was in El Salvador. And he said, I've always said that Bitcoin has a different meaning or different use depending on who you are. And I'm kind of coming to that conclusion now. I think there are multiple uses for Bitcoin. It depends who you are and depends where in the world you are. I think for some people it's a store of value, digital gold, which is great, makes sense. But I also think some people will use it to transact because... I do. I think some people will use it for remittance. I think there's got a whole bunch of use cases. And I think you can, if you find a use for it that suits you, then cool. Whatever that is, that's cool. I like that. Mm. Whatever floats your boat, baby. Yeah. Whatever floats yeah, your I, Bitcoin. I, I think that's good. Um, I, I think that I can see that perspective. Uh, I mean, but I mean, you could say the same thing about gold also, right? Like uh, throughout history, there's been different times where gold has been used to hedge assets and to be, you know, it, it, its own thing. But then also like people actually still transact with gold, you know, at different places at different times. Um, so, uh, you know, you can, if I say, hey, Peter, I, I've got, uh, you know, something I want to sell to you and you say, hey, I'll give you a gold bar for it. Like, hey, I would take it. But most of the time, people are using it as an investment. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I mean, it's funny time you should say that. I just did a show today that came out with Parker Lewis talking about what is money. And one of the big problems we've got, a couple of big problems, is that you can't send it over the internet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it has, a, it has a centralization problem. And it's, you know, if you have a gold bar, but, but actually it's only half the gold bar I need, like cutting that gold bar in half is a pain. So divisibility is, is a problem. So what Bitcoin does, it essentially has all the properties of gold, but also you can send it over the internet and you can, uh, it's divisible down to what is it, like 100 million units per Bitcoin. And that's kind of cool. And actually, he also said a really interesting thing to me. He said, well, a lot of people, their problem with between gold and Bitcoin is like they psychologically can't get over the fact that this one is a lump of thing and this one is like ones and zeros it's tangible and yeah it's tangible but he said if you could separate them both say you can't touch smell feel either of them here are their properties okay and you listed out their properties but this one has every property of that but you can send it over the internet and you can do it to you know uh, whatever it is eight decimal places which one are you going to want it's like well clearly you want this one so basically bitcoin's king Bitcoin yeah, is I, king. yeah I, I would definitely agree that in my opinion, Bitcoin blows gold away in every possible imaginable way. And I, and I think that, you know, where we're at now is it, it's hard for people to wrap their minds around the zeros and the ones in the truly digital form. Because even though like really credit cards and debit cards, it's digital money. The way you transact is all digital, but yet you have a little bitty physical card in your hand. And I think right now we're really making that transition when you see people in China that only use their phones for stuff, as crazy as it is to think in the United States and, you know, in Europe and other places, we're not nearly as dependent on our phone as they are in Asia. They're using it more and more. And I think, it, I think the phone is kind of that bridge to get us from, you know, where we're actually using physical, uh, physical pieces of silver or, you know, plastic cards, whatever it, it might be to transact that's the bridge between that and then totally digital money because if you really look at science fiction movies like i know it sounds crazy but it, it's true science fiction movies always predict the future like everything that we put in science fiction movies is things that people can imagine in their mind and if people can imagine it in their mind then there's probably a way that we can actually make that happen if you not, look at not, science fiction, not crypt, really quick, not crypto related, but one of my favorite movie forecasts of the future was on Back to the Future when the Cubs won the World Series. God, that was great for me. <laughs> I just won the hoverboard. <laughs> yeah, come on. He doesn't, Peter doesn't know about American sports, okay? Let's just go ahead and look. Yes, I do. Yes, likes, I do. He likes soccer. Soccer's his favorite. No, sport. I, I know about American sports. I do. I've got, I've got oh. a team in each sport. Do you really? Yeah. Who's your team in the NFL? 49ers. Oh, okay. Okay. All right. Okay. When, what, so when I first started to watch football, it was um, Jerry God, Young, love that. Jerry Rice, Jerry Rice, sorry, Steve Young, yeah. 
Oh, yeah. Like that, that was, was my and, and they were on. I was like, I like them, so I kind of stuck with them. They they suck since I saw them play in London with Kaepernick, which was cool. Uh, oh. And my my college team is Texas Tech. Okay. Oh, yeah, here we go. And again, because the first game I ever watched was the one where Crabtree, I don't even remember, like in the last second. Oh, yeah. It was, like, it was against Texas. It was Texas yep. Tech versus Texas. It's like 49 47 or 47 45. Such a stupid game. score. And he, like, he, took, he took it. The guy he should have tackled him, took it and run it in. So on the, uh, I say on the ice hockey, I'm probably go with the Rangers just because I go and watch them every time I'm in New York. Is that correct? Have I got the, yeah. This is where I sound like an idiot if I guess things wrong. Uh, no, no, Dodgers, no. Dodgers, Dodgers are my um, baseball team because uh, I used to watch them when I was in LA and I went to a playoff game where Justin Turner hit a walk-off home run. Yeah, I remember I was, that game. Okay. Yeah. I was like, well, that's, that's my team. And then I've always liked the Boston Celtics. I think it's because okay. I'm half Irish. Okay. That's when good. you're from England, you can actually pick any team from across the country in the United States. You can. Right? Yeah, you can. Yeah, yeah. I probably somebody else will probably go. What the fuck? You can't support that. <laughs> and that. You, can't, you can't be New York and Boston. You can if you're not from here. So I'm pretty much Atlanta all the way. I, I am a, a Lakers fan. Outside of that, but uh, okay. Well, Falcons. your 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 respect on the show has gone up tremendously uh, since <laughs> you talked about sports. Uh, you know, if you don't like sports, you're a nerd. So we respect that. <laughs> so you're a Falcons fan. I am a Falcons fan. Yeah, yeah. I am a Falcons fan. Well, we all know what we're famous for. So, joking. <laughs> yeah, I, I was at the Super Bowl. I, I was at the game, the twenty-eight to three Super Bowl. So, uh, miserable. I'm diehard. I'm like the one diehard Falcons fan in the world. But, anyways, the, back to what I was saying before we talk Sorry, sports, man. because we love talking sports here on the show, though. Um, but in science fiction movies, like everything in the future is digital. So why would money? not be completely digital. And that's where we're going. And like I said, using phones to transact uh, is, uh, you know, uh, a medium, a bridge to get us to that place. And it's going to be very interesting to see what happens in the next 50 years. There's recently a report put out, I don't know if you saw it, by Deutsche Bank. Uh, they said that they believe cryptocurrencies will be completely adopted by 2030. Did you see that? What? No, I didn't. Yeah. 10 so, years, huh? Yeah, it was, it was an analyst with Deutsche Bank. So, I mean, it wasn't like he's their official analyst, but it, the report was put out under his analytics company, not necessarily Deutsche Bank. But he's the guy who's helping them make analytical decisions. And he said, yeah, by 2030, cryptocurrencies will totally take over. He said that the only thing holding back cryptocurrencies right now is just they're so hard to use. And, I mean, we, we see that with everything. When, when do you think Bitcoin is going to be easy? Uh, for a no coiner or whatever you, you want to call them for people that aren't into cryptocurrency where someone says, Hey, I want to do a transaction with Bitcoin and it's not intimidating. How, how far away from that do you think we are? Oh, I don't know. That's a tough question. That's a really, uh, it's a really hard question to answer because there is so much you have to understand when you go down the rabbit hole. I mean, that first time you do a transaction, you got to Kraken or Coinbase, and you go and buy a bit of Bitcoin, you transfer it. You're kind of like, okay, I paid X dollars and I got X much, much of this. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then you move it. It's kind of like, oh, wow, that was cool. I moved, moved it. And then, then I guess, I guess it's really easy at that point. You know, you know how an address works, you know how to move it. But I think you need to understand how you want to use Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to save it? Do you want to spend it? If you spend it, do you want to top back up? So I think one of the most important things isn't always the UX. It's understanding the economics of it as well. But I honestly don't know when it'll be complete. I mean, I guess it's pretty usable now. Um, it depends how like far down the rabbit hole you want people to go as well. Like if you want them to use Tor and CoinJoin and, and run a node, then no, I think we're no. way off. Yeah. I just don't, you know, I, I'm pissing off a lot of people by saying it. This is why I piss off people all the time, but, <laughs> but, but I'm saying it by just saying, look, this you're, you're, what fucking planet do you live on? Like I, it's hard enough to go down and like go and have a pint with a mate and say, listen, I think you should get into Bitcoin. They're like, mm -hmm. why? So, well, it's the future of money. Well, why? I was like, well, you know, because governments are bad and they print loads of it, so it's going to be worth nothing. And, you know, one day they might steal it all. And they're like, nah, well, they didn't steal it last week. And I don't think they could steal it next week. And, and then what will happen? It will go up and they'll see it in the news. So then they'll FOMO in. To then try and get them to go, right, well, by the way, you really, to be really self-sovereign, you need to get a node and you need to... You need to link that to Tor because you want to protect your privacy and you want to use CoinJoin because you want to mix your coins. It's just like, it's, fuck, it's not going to happen. Like, I reckon, oh, God, I'd guess 
may I mean, this is a stupid number just out there but maybe like one in ten thousand people will do all of that there's probably right. like there's probably like a handful of people they're all on twitter doing that the majority of people are gonna you know buy it hopefully take it off the exchange hopefully have a hardware wallet or but i think a lot of people will just fuck it up or just yeah. not care enough and we can teach and teach and teach them to we're blue in the face i just don't think they're going to do it I, I, I think a large percentage you don't care to do all that no one cares to do all that it's, it's, all, just it's too all, much it's a, it's a lot of steps but you know like ben what we were talking about the other day you know like with this pep coin peter i don't know if you've seen this you know like on chip bags and sodas and all this stuff here in the states pepsi's got this new thing called pep coin now it's not an actual cryptocurrency but what it does is that it's teaching people kind of this whole tokenized economy thing so it's the word we used was grooming maybe we're saying paving the way you know it's 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 desensitizing people to the notion of hey you know and i believe this is purely generational obviously for older people in the world they're not going to get it as much as we get it younger people they're growing up in a digital world so it only makes sense to have digital money it just makes sense. So as we continue to advance the technology and make things easier, hopefully, you know, we're going to, we're going to get more people to, to jump in, but not until like we all say until it's easier. And it's, you know, it's, it's not the buying it. It's, you know, it's the storing it. It's the saving the seed phrase. It's like, Oh, if I lose my paper wallet, mm -hmm. how am I going to get it back? You know, cause I, how many millions of, how many million Bitcoin have already been lost? No, I know, man. I mean, I think we can. I think you can take people in stages, right? You can just say to them, "Just get it off an exchange. Just yeah. get a hardware wallet and store it." Oh yeah, and once you've got the hardware wallet, you need to store your seed, and you need to store it in a couple of safe places. I, I think you can get people into those basic steps quite a lot. I think it's the more advanced stuff. I just think people will really struggle. They right. really do, and I just think it's. I think people underestimate how much is involved in this. So therefore, what is the goal? Now, one of the interesting questions I want to ask people right now is like, is the goal to take down the banks, you know, and have this entire new financial system? If it is, well, there's got to be some trade-offs. You've got to accept people are not going to do exactly what you want. Yeah, if and, XRP, not, and XRP will have to go away too, because that's the point of XRP. <laughs> um, or is, is, the, is the goal to create this uh, kind of financial network that anyone can use and it's kind of like it's underground thing and you know it won't go completely mainstream but and that, if, it, if that's the case then fine cool you can create a, like an army of like badass cypherpunks who are going to do everything in the right way and they, they're going to understand about protecting their privacy and running a node i still think it'll be a minority of the network but but that's it I, it's like which one do you want i, I don't think both can I don't think both can coexist as a as a short term object, objective. It's kind of one or the other. Yeah. Uh, so, <laughs> the, when people attacked you for not having your own node, that was probably <laughs> the nerdiest thing I've ever seen on crypto Twitter, which is saying so much. So recently, okay, for Christmas, uh, my mom uh, told me on Christmas Day she said, "I've got a great surprise for you and your brother." I was like, "Okay, awesome." You know, so uh, we you know, our families after we, you know, did Santa Claus and things like here, you know, that at our houses on Christmas morning, we all went over to my family's house and my mom, uh, you know, had this present for us. And we're like, oh yeah, you know, cool. We're so excited. And we opened it up and it was all of the Ninja Turtle action figures from when we were kids. Now it wasn't the ones that we had. We used to have every one, you know, we were seven, eight years old. And my mom, like she worked two jobs. She did everything she could. So one Christmas, she could surprise us with mm -hmm. all the Ninja Turtles. And we were just like, so over the moon. But over time, they got broken. We lost them. We grew into teenagers, you know, yada, yada, yada. But my mom had found a guy or a, a lady on Facebook that was selling the entire collection. Uh, you know, they've been. That's fucking cool. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah not, they, they had not been played with, or they had been played with. They weren't like brand new in the packages or whatever. She was, it was a nostalgic. She wanted shoes like, man, this is incredible. Like, check these out. She's, uh, we said, how did you get these? She said, well, the lady posted them on the Facebook marketplace and said that her 35 year old son <laughs> would not leave the house and had not had a job. And all he did <laughs> was play with his toys Stop and his it. comic books. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> Obsessed Stop with this it. stuff and said he never left the house and he would not get off the couch. So she decided to steal all of his toys and sell them. And that's how he got them. These are the people making fun of you for not having a node. Uh, look, dude, I know. Listen, look, most of the people like I have, I've met a lot of people online 
from Twitter and then I've met them in person and the whole interaction is very different. It's very different. But most of the time, there's a lot of people who are very vocal and <laughs> they're very uh, uh, animated about what their expectations are, but they have no, like zero, like almost no understanding of UX and, ha- and, and, and the reality of what people do. You know, I, I constantly get the whole, Oh, you're a fucking idiot. Cause you haven't got a node or you're a fucking idiot. <laughs> so cause you, dumb. you're not, you're not technical. And I'm like, the whole idea of the show was when I first got into it, it was very intimidating. There's so much to learn. I kind of didn't want to learn it all. I wanted to know the basics and I wanted to make a show for people like me. And then they're like, you're a fucking idiot. And I'm like, well, there are a lot of people like me who probably, probably need the content like this. And perhaps maybe that's why like, I don't know. I don't mean, I don't know what the full numbers are, but I'm guessing mine is like the biggest Bitcoin show or one of the biggest. Right. Mm -hmm. So there's obviously an audience for it. You know, if like if 300,000 people are downloading it a month, they're downloading it because they like it and they enjoy the content. And also I get all the DMs and I, I should probably just screen grab them all day. There's, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of people, times people have written to me and said, thank you. I really appreciate your approach. You're asking the questions I want to ask. Now, for any of those people, if I really wanted to set up a node, I can figure it out, right? I figured out how to edit a podcast. I downloaded Audacity. <laughs> I learned to use Audacity. I learned to use uh, recording equipment. You know, I built my website. I learned SEO. Like, I can figure out how to run a fucking node, but I'm not gonna. I'm not helping anyone by just saying, just saying that. I think I'm helping people more by saying, "Well, this is a bit complicated. I'm not sure I want to do it," and like, kind of raising the issues to make a conversation around it. And then maybe people will understand why other people won't do it or make it easier. But it's, it's just honestly, it's just mind, mind numbing to that people are, have such a gap between what they think people know and what people actually know. It's uh, Look, it is what it is. You can't make content without having haters. I'm sure you have your own haters at times. Speak, speaking of uh, haters and people not knowing but need to know, uh, something I want to talk to you about. This was yep. uh, something that happened a few weeks ago. You got to debate Richard Hart about his hex program. Yes. So that wasn't an interview. That wasn't an interview. Uh, I guess it was more of a debate. You're right. Um, and, and in that, it, it, if you haven't listened, you should go listen because it's just hilarious. The guy's clearly, and we've reached out to him down on the show to talk to him, but he's unresponsive. So piss off, Richard. He's probably but, exited now. Well, I mean, there, there was just, just yesterday, there was a story that said all the uh, ETH has been moved. It was moved. Oh, that from, it went, went sub Satoshi, didn't it? Yeah, that's from... Uh, Bryce Weiner. <laughs> what a Weiner. That was from, yeah. Well, well, just a bit of a hypocrite, I think. He's hardly got a clean track record. But, um, yeah, I mean, I saw it. Look, it's so fucking obvious what's going to happen. I've still got people messaging me saying, you're so unprofessional, you're meant to be a journalist, and you didn't debate him, and you were saying bad words to him. I was like, yeah, I, I, yeah, I did. Of course I fucking did. This is moronic. I'm not. Are gonna debate something that's so stupid what actually happened was i watched the one with stefan levera the day before and i watched him just talking over people sorry talking over stefan and when stefan had a good point he would so richard people think he's a good debater no he's a disingenuous debater because what he'll do is he will change the point when you're right he will talk over you he essentially bully interviews right and it's bullshit and so i thought right i'll go on and i just won't allow him to debate it I'm just not going to bait it. I'm just saying you're a scammer. You're a scammer over and over again. Like you're a scammer. Mm-hmm. When he wants to talk about something else, I go, no, because you're a scammer. And that's all I wanted people to see. Uh, you know, if somebody, and you had people going, well, I think because people will have seen that, they will have bought it because of that. And I was like, well, they're fucking idiots. Not because, because they should be, believe me, but they should see enough in that to go, hmm, I should do some research on this. Now, whether it's a scam or not is a different thing, right? Like what actually defines legally what a scam is? What it definitely is is shady as fuck. Oh, what yeah. it definitely is was a way for, you know, when he first came out and he said, oh, it's just going to be a free airdrop for people who've got Bitcoin. Oh, and then later on, it's, well, you know, if you do want to buy some, you can. It's this. Oh, and by the way, it's designed to pump and it can 10,000 X, blah, blah, blah. I mean, if it's not illegal, it's shady as fuck. He's essentially a thief. He's a piece of shit. And anyone who's given him the time all day or saying it deserves debating are fucking morons. Well, here's here's my question because I, I definitely align with uh, the basically your mindset uh, on hex. the The question that I wonder about is, 
is he intentionally trying to steal from people or is he delusional? Which, oh, no, he's, in, he's intentional. No, he knows what he's doing. I mean, yeah, well, again, I can't say for certain, but you only have to Google his name and go and look at his past to realize he has a very shady past. He's done a lot of shady things. You know, he's, he's not the most, shall we say, honest gentleman there is. And I suspect uh, he lost loads of money in the ball run. I think he was, I'm going to guess he was leveraged long. He thought Bitcoin was going to go higher. He got trapped like so many people did. I think he absolutely got wrecked. And I, I wouldn't say he's pr- probably broke, but I, th- I reckon he wants a good standard of living. He's like, well, do you know what? I can create this. I've got an audience. I can convince them. And some people invest some money and fuck it. I'll walk away with that money. Four, and $4 million later, there he goes. Yeah, I so say I wonder if that's all... I wonder if that, that's all of it, him. Like, uh, sorry, other people. Um, I, like, I wonder if he kind of figured a way of putting some of his own money in that. I don't know. I would be surprised if people put four million dollars into this. I would not. Like, really? I would not uh, at all. There was just there was just a post on Twitter today about a guy who did a paid group and got a million dollars in a few months from people and just totally exit scammed. You know, like. How in the world can these people just pop up overnight and, and they get a million dollars? And and that's why I believe, and, and I can tell you, like, I had people on Instagram that I know that are not like, you know, that they're not probably the most super technical people or people that understand crypto the best, but they're in crypto and they were telling me how I had to get in on this thing with Richard Hart. Like, oh man, you got to do a video about this. This is going to be huge. I'm, I'm getting in on it. Uh, you know, I'm doing this airdrop. And I was like, uh, that doesn't, I know I was never going to send any money to it. I, I know that. Of course for not. Sure. Yeah. I mean, you've got to be fucking brain dead to, to think, <laughs> to think this is worth it. And some people did. I'm like, oh. do you know what I did? I'll tell you what's funny. I remember when I first got into crypto and I uh, bought some Bitcoin, bought some Ethereum, then bought fucking everything. Bought Dash, Monero, literally everything. And I was like, well, like I have a, a certain amount of sympathy for people who believe in a blockchain world, because I did, I, I wasn't thinking I'm scamming people. I was like, oh, this makes sense. We're going to have a better market with Augur. Oh, we've got a privacy coin with Monero. Uh, we've got, you know, we've got Bitcoin Silver. We're like, like those early days, I was convinced, okay? And I invested in all of it and I was making money. I was like, this is the world that's coming. Like I got it, right? And then over time, I was like, ah, uh, yeah, this doesn't make sense. I've got no reason to use this. No one's using this. UX is terrible. Oh yeah, this is all bullshit. So, but when I, when I was convinced, I used to get into debates, I used to have like OG saying, you're a fucking idiot, what are you doing? Like no patience at all with me, just literally no patience. Why are you interviewing scammers? Why are you giving a platform for scammers? It's like, I just want to learn. I think there's something here. I'm now there, like we're talking, what, three years on? And I'm now there going, yeah, it's all fucking bullshit. <laughs> and I've got no, I'm like running out of patience with people. And I'm just telling people they're idiots because I just can't be fucking bothered now. No, and but, but that's what's holding the space back too, is all the scams, you know, all this stuff. I mean, people aren't going to jump in when they know that, I mean, there are just clear scams happening left and right. I mean, it's all just over the shop, all over the, all over the garage here. All over the garage. Yeah. There's, yeah. It is a shame. And also I, you know, I don't think it's helpful that it's helpful to call every single thing a scam. It is. It I is think, not at all. I think you can grade it. I think you can have outright scams. You can have, blockchain scams like outright scams something like one coin then you have blockchain scams uh something like bitconnect and then i think you can have just really really dumb ideas like really stupid ideas whereby someone's like you know like potatoes on the blockchain or some fucking bullshit where it's just like you don't need it on the blockchain that's a real thing just just it just doesn't that's stupid and then i think you've got a few things where it's like okay do I honestly think these people are hundred percent trying to scam people? No. Is the idea going to work? Probably not, but is it an outright scam? I don't think it is. I think, I think it's more helpful to separate them. So at least people know what they're looking at. Yeah. And people that are people like tone Vase, for instance, that basically calls everything a scam that's not Bitcoin. Like I, I like tone. I've met him, you know, I'm not saying anything bad about him as a person, but I don't feel like that's helpful because that, that really just, makes people think that all of crypto is a scam because let's face it, Bitcoin is like 0.001% of all the coins out there. However, we know the market cap, obviously it's about 68%, but 
But it, it, in my opinion, that's not doing anybody favors. And when you look at, like, okay, let's say 99% of uh, all blockchain coins, let, let's say they fail, okay? 99%. That's only 9% more than any other startup in the, in the world. You know, 90% of startups, 90% of businesses fail. Just because they're a failing business does not mean they're a scam. And when we use the word scam to just blanket so much stuff, it's so confusing and it just, it, it creates this echo chamber, especially like I did a video, a video yesterday about altcoins on my channel. And I believe that we are heading back towards altcoins going back up. If you look at the, the every altcoin season we've ever had, has followed a similar pattern. But the problem is they're quick bursts. So by the time that people get real excited about them, it's already over, you know? Um, it happened so fast. And, and, and a lot of these people that are just calling everything scams, that's not going to play well when the market goes back up. I was able to pull up a bunch of articles that look as silly <clears throat> as the guy that said the internet wasn't going to work from 2016 when people said altcoins will never, ever, ever do well. And then we saw what they did. And some of those coins are significant. Ethereum, XRP, whether you like it or not, you know, uh, Stellar, uh, Litecoin, these have significant market caps, you know, some in the billions. Yeah, but I think it's meaningless. I think a lot of them have got really low liquidity. And the main issue is use case. Like, who's using any of this? <clears throat> I, think, I think there is a, a small argument that there, I think there's a fair argument that people are using Ethereum, right? That people are definitely using that. Um, I think, what are they using it for? You know, uh, is it compound finance or Uniswap or whatever these things I hear about? And ultimately, can it scale? And I think it's the, all the evidence leads to it's got real scaling problems ahead. Or Augur, is anyone using Augur? Is anyone using Zero X? Like, what is the viability? Well, not, of these it, people aren't using Zero X anymore because uh, all the main tokens have moved off of Ethereum. Well, but but my point being is like, is anyone using any of this shit? And I well, think. But, 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 but here's the thing. I, I think it boils down to, do you believe that blockchain and tokenization is going to have as big of an impact on the world as the internet? And if you believe yes, oh, yeah. then you probably believe in the full tokenization of the world in the future. And if that's the case, then it makes sense that we will have multiples. I've said many times, I believe when you talk about projects that are terrible ideas like bananas on the blockchain or potatoes, you know, as you said, I agree with you. They sound terrible. However, a lot of these projects, in my opinion, are just way ahead of their time. Eventually, all that stuff will happen. When you look back at the internet, I talk about this all the time. Look at Webvan. Webvan was so far ahead of its time that it completely failed. And yet, this Yeah, but week, why did Webvan this, fail? This week, I've used two different grocery delivery services, you know? Yeah, but what, what, why did Webvan fail? Because there wasn't the demand for it at the time. Yeah, but it could have succeeded. The main reason it failed is it scaled before it had customers. It had customers. It just, by the time it out built out its service, service uh, it didn't have enough cover, uh, customers to cover its costs. Was it like 800 million they raised or something crazy? Yeah. The thing is, one of the, th the problems with these things is like, what happened to bootstrapping? What happened to angel rounds and then a series A? Like what these people essentially, did, a lot of these blockchains did, they did an IPO before they had a product. And now they can't even get, they can't get the traction of like the most basic startup. There's no traction there. So that's, that's going to be the main problem is that where's the traction? Where's the need? Because you've got to say, why do you want a blockchain? Well, you want to decentralize something. Well, what do you want to decentralize? Well, I want to decentralize money. Why? Well, the government fucks with us and they steal it from us. Okay, that makes sense. What else do you want to decentralize? I want to decentralize Twitter. Why? Because they ban people. Well, yeah, but you can start another account and no one really uses it and it's got critical mass okay yeah so that's not going to work what else do you want to decentralize gambling no worse like so many things work perfectly well centralized why do you need to decentralize it you don't you don't need a decentralized uber it, you can you can put together a logical reason why it'd be better but can you build it out so it's actually truly decentralized and that it's uh and, and so, so for example if you put uber on the fucking blockchain like how do you run customer service <laughs> like you've got to have some things that are centralized and that you know maybe that's annoying but that's that's what it is like what do you need to decentralize for me i've heard i've heard very very few arguments beyond money that make any sense yeah maybe land registry but i reckon you can do that in a database anyway so maybe you'll tokenize shares I, I, maybe but i just think it's it's a, a, it's a solution trying to find a problem and and no one's made it fit and i think there's a reason why 
What do you think? Actually, since we've just been talking, uh, John McAfee just posted something about tokenizing on the blockchain uh, the members of Congress, all of the money that they get, whether it's their salary, donations, contributions, all that stuff. What do you think about something like that, tokenizing the government so that we as citizens can see exactly what's going on? Well, I think, it, I think right now you, crypto needs two things. It needs Bitcoin and it needs a stable coin. Mm-hmm. I mean, you can have multiple stable coins, but that's all it needs, right? For, so for me, for example, if you want to bank the unbanked, I have to have a bank account because I have to have you know, pounds. Right. But I could get away with not having a bank account if I had a wallet, which was Bitcoin and um, a stable coin. And I, would, I, I know I would, I would kind of use different levers for them at different, different points. So what do you actually tokenize? Are you tokenizing them or are you just creating a ledger which tracks where the, the donations they receive go? I'm pretty sure you could do that without a blockchain. I'm pretty sure you could just create a process where you have to track everything. Yeah, that's a good point. Like, so what, what, is, what is it we're trying to do here? We're, we're trying to create an audit. Well, what about, this, what about, you know, is there an official process they have to go through for it to be logged? Well, if there's an official process for it to be logged, that can go into a database. It doesn't need a blockchain to do that. Yeah. Well, I just, I, 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 <laughs> That's a good point. I, I just think when it comes to, to decentralization, I feel like decentralization is very important. I feel like we're still, like people neglect this fact. The internet is still in the days of the wild, wild west. People want to say crypto is wild, wild west. The internet is still, what, only 25, 30 years old as we know it? That's mm-hmm. so new, like a baby. Imagine cars, when cars were 25 to 30 years old compared to where we are now. Like, yeah. it's so drastically different. Now, I feel like the internet is that way. So we're still in a place where, like, like YouTube pops up. And everybody realizes like, wow, I can have my own platform. I can have my own voice. I can make my own videos. And everybody, has, they go through a honeymoon phase or we've been through a honeymoon phase with YouTube where it's like, oh, this is great. This is novel. I want to get my voice out. And then what happens? The corporate structure of Google, obviously they bought YouTube at some point. And then the corporate structure, structure of Google adds censorship, demonetizes people, starts making people angry. And now people are starting to realize that in this kind of like gig economy that we have where people can have platforms everywhere and we don't necessarily need, uh, you know, someone else behind what we're doing as work. Like I don't need to work at a company to go on Fiverr and to sell graphic design. I just think that the internet in general is moving to a much more decentralized place where people are realizing that we have power. So you're right. All of these things, they've worked fine in a centralized manner since we've had the internet. But I don't believe that's the future of where we're going. And if it is, then that's a totalitarian uh, you know, future that I don't want to head towards. I would much rather move towards a place where people have more power. So do we need to tokenize people, on, you know, congressmen on the blockchain? Probably not. But do we need to have censorship uh, resistant platforms where people can get their voice out and not have to worry about uh, all of a sudden Google decides that, uh, you know, uh, like he, here's something crazy I, I've thought about in videos. Like if you say the word minor, like crypto mining, like what if the YouTube algorithm reads that as minor, M-I-N-O-R, and now all of a sudden because of COPPA, they want to ban your video. Like there's all kinds of things that those places can do to really exert their power and control. And they can do a lot of things veiled in camouflage, like what their true motives might be. So to me personally, like, yes, we're not there. We we don't need everything on the blockchain right now. We don't need everything decentralized. It works. But over time, I think people are going to get more behind that idea. I think we're seeing it. Maybe. Right. But, but you don't need a token. Like Bit, BitTorrent, did, BitTorrent survived for years built till Trump bought it, gave it a token. You didn't need a token. It worked fine. You can build these things decentralized. They don't need tokens. I think the main problem is trying to, trying to turn everything into money. There's this like weird incentive structure to make everything money. Because it makes people fucking rich. People have got rich. People have become billionaires off this. Like billionaires. Yeah, back to and then back to hundredaires. Yeah, God, well, life sucks at that point. Yeah, well, but, uh, yeah, I, look, I, I, I wasn't like even the, alluding to you, but yeah, of course, you went through that as well. Yeah, like, that's a, yeah, uh, 90, 95% of people went through that. Did yeah. you have a big drawdown? Yeah, oh, we God. all did. Yeah, we, yeah we all did. Everyone did. And do you know it's funny? You get the fuckers. They come at me. They cut, start swinging at me. Aren't you the idiot who like went up to one point two million and lost it? I was like, yeah. So probably my proportions are exactly the same as you. My drawdown's about the same. What's your fucking point? Yeah, right. Like, there's Back like off, there's like there's like five people who made money. <laughs> <laughs> none of us. None of us thought it, it, no. in 2017 that it was going to crash like it did. Like it was just. No. I mean, that's the euphoria of the bull market, right? I mean, there were. Very- it's going to go on forever. 
Yeah. yeah. Just Charlie Lee. Divers, diversify your assets, and then all of a sudden you're down 95%. Yeah. yeah. More tokens. <laughs> Right, that's the bottom. No, that's the bottom. No, that's the bottom. Where's the fucking bottom? <laughs> Always looking for it. Uh, well, Peter, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a blast today. All right, man. Uh, talking Loved to it. You. Uh, if you could, tell everybody where they can find you at. Yeah, I've got two podcasts. One's called What Bitcoin Did. It's all about Bitcoin. I've got another show called Defiance, which is a bit more kind of political, activist kind of stuff. Uh, you can find me on Twitter, at Peter McCormack, or just Google What Bitcoin Did or, or What Bitcoin Did or Defiance. Thanks for having me on, guys. When will we hang out in person next? Ooh, Maybe consensus? consensus? Probably, yeah. Is, yeah. That the next time, is that the next time you're coming to the States? Uh, I might be over in February. I don't think I'll be in Atlanta. Where are you? Uh, Austin, Texas. I'm in Austin all the fucking time. Dude. I was in Austin like two weeks ago, dude. Like dude. three weeks ago. I was, I've been in Austin. I was in there in December and I was in November. Well, will, if I'm coming over in February, it will probably be Austin. Awesome. Hit me up. Yeah, we'll do that. Cool. Awesome. Well, Peter, we will catch you on the next time we see you. Thanks for joining the show. Cool. All right. See thanks you. for having me, guys. Thanks, man.